Like, how is that even possible? Christian Wayne says, Rave, you're screaming the Crocs is like mommy love was. I never know what she's doing up there. I never know what she's doing up there. 30 seconds left, guys, if you want to win a pack of BB Heroes. Probably the $1,600 Umber out of the. cards yellow why are these cards yellow why are these cards yellow why are the cards yellow why are these cards yellow why are the cards yellow Why are these cards yellow? Why were those packs open? Why were there juice boxes in those V-Star Universe boxes? That's what we're gonna talk about today, y'all. So, Poke Vault got scammed live on camera while streaming. Today's video, I'm gonna teach you all about proxy Ow, scams, what same. that means, why Poke Vault got scammed, and how, or at least maybe, maybe, I'll read his response. He put out an apology letter. We'll go over that. Um, he seems to think the guy he bought from is the one who got scammed. Either way, it doesn't matter. There's nothing Pokevault can do about it. He is completely SOL. I'm going to explain to you why, but I'm also going to explain to you the logic, the mindset behind a Japanese a-hole scammer. I'm going to explain to you why these people decide to scam when they scam. Because scammers, they don't scam every time. They pick and choose when they're going to scam. And when it comes to us buying Pokemon cards from them, from Japan, there's a specific scenario that all these Japanese scammers look for. And they're like, yep, time to scam. Um, <clears throat> throughout this video, I'm also going to throw up just random I got scammed thumbnails. Because this is nothing new. Uh, the fact that... Old man Sean Pokeball even allowed himself to be in this position to get scammed is silly given the sheer amount of examples over the last three years of this happening. Um, so yeah, a proxy scam. A proxy, for starters guys, is a middleman service that you can use to purchase items from Japan. So let's say you buy a bunch of stuff on Japanese websites. These proxies then, you ship to the proxy, the proxy takes everything, puts it in one box, and then sends it back to you in America. Now, what's the problem with this? So a proxy, one, is a middleman service. What is a middleman? A middleman is an extra step, an extra opportunity for things to go wrong, an extra chance for things to take way too long to get to where they need to go. You get more people involved, you get more stops along the way, you get more chances of scamming. So first of all, here's a bunch, let me just throw up, I'm gonna, I looked up a bunch of different proxy uh, middleman websites or whatever, I'll throw those up on screen, but it's like Neokio, Sendico, I actually have a message from Sendico. Um, about this Pokemon scar card scamming that I'm going to throw up because it's very interesting. They highlight the ways you get scammed because um, obviously it's a huge problem with them and they don't they don't want to be a middleman for scammers. Uh, you got from Japan, Zen Market, Mercari. Uh, I think it's like Yahoo Auction, something else. Anyway, these are all these are all proxy oh websites that you can. Number order from Japan and then have them send to you. And that's your way of ordering directly from Japan at Japanese market prices. So first of all, 
ordering cards from Japan, period. There's, we're going to talk about a lot here. So ordering Pokemon cards from Japan, period. Should you do that? Here's my opinion. No, <laughs> absolutely not. There are now so many American, uh, American based American Japanese Pokemon sellers that are all competing with each other to sell you Japanese booster boxes for the lowest price possible here domestic in America. Like for example, we got like Poke Collect, you know, Poke Any. There's just ran there's two random ones right there. So these guys are not selling their sealed booster boxes for like outrageously more than if you did one of these proxy, you know, the these buy e type scenarios. These are American sellers that are not going to search, open, re-glue, or switch out your Japanese booster boxes. So, do you even need to do this now? No, absolutely not. Why did it get popular? It got popular because in COVID, during the COVID times, there was a serious shipment issue. So, a large amount of the community found ways to acquire Japanese Pokemon cards via these proxies, via doing it in Japan and having a proxy send you it. Okay? Thing is, you don't need to do that, period, whatsoever. Why? So as far as Pokeball is concerned, what happened to him specifically? Pokeball had a scenario where one of the handful of tactics that we're going to go over in a minute, he had his packs replaced with a cheaper language pack. In this case, with EV Heroes, um, Korean and Japanese, the packs weigh exactly the same. They have a little puzzle piece insert. EV Heroes is printed in five different languages. And in Japanese and Korean, the packs on the outside and the weight, they are exactly, well, they, they weigh the same. So it's very easy to switch out Japanese and Korean packs uh, and get away with it. So that's what happened to Pokeball, is he got Korean packs instead of Japanese. Real quick, let's look at some other ways that you can get scammed. And so for this, I'm going to actually use a, uh, a proxy, uh, Syndico. So per Syndico, listings which display cards in box but arrive as loose boosters in plastic bags, most likely searched packs. Booster packs that are listed as unopened but are missing rares that have been replaced by energy or other lower cost cards listings that claim their boxes have not been opened and are factory sealed but have been opened checked rares removed and resealed listings that claim their boxes have not been opened and are factory sealed but have been opened all boosters removed and an object of equivalent weight put in their place usually juice boxes so here's the thing guys japanese pokemon cards the packs are weighable okay they are the boxes are searchable it's the way it is that's that's just the way they are made and that is a reality if you buy loose packs there's an exceptionally high chance that they were weighed or they were just opened until the SR was pulled and then you automatically know everything left is essentially bulk so that's just an issue you have to deal with no matter what as it relates to Japanese. Okay, but Pokevault. Here, let's get into how you can avoid these issues. So we'll get into how you can avoid these issues and then I'll get into why Japanese scammers use proxies so successfully to scam people. So first of all, the reason Vault is screwed is because of this. Like anything else happened. That was like, I mean, it was like it was like a, it was like a it, it was like a private sale, bro. It's not like it, it wasn't private, eBay. Yeah. yeah. PayPal and eBay are one and the same. eBay owns PayPal. If you buy Pokemon cards on a site like eBay, you are absolutely 100% backed by eBay they will absolutely refund you if you open a case that it was fraud or you got scammed. PayPal, same thing. If you use PayPal to buy anywhere, not even on eBay, just anywhere, and you file a case, you are covered. 
Now you may be asking, can you use PayPal on a proxy website and then will PayPal cover you if you get scammed on the proxy? Well, I looked into that and I figured out that answer as well. So a guy named Beagle Cake uh, asked PayPal this specific issue because he got scammed on one of the third parties I mentioned, the Neo Kyo. And uh, so this guy, Beagle Cake, uh, I bought 13 new with shrink Pokemon boxes from a proxy called Nico. All the boxes have been previously opened and four out of the box were completely different. Blah, blah, blah. Needless to say, I contact Nico about a refund. Yada, yada. It said it's against their terms of service. Yada, yada, yada. I'm here to ask if it's illegal, if I can do this. Uh, also, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so long story short, PayPal representative says this. Welcome to the PayPal Community Forum. I'm sorry to hear a recent purchase didn't go quite as you had expected. If you purchase something through PayPal and end up receiving something other than what was described, you absolutely have the right to report that transaction through PayPal's dispute process. Okay. So, PayPal. PayPal has your back. eBay has your back. American sellers that have a reputation to uphold and know that they will get called out if they scam you because there's no middleman, there's no proxy, there's no thousands of miles of distance. They will not scam you. They got your back. Okay? The You save zero money whatsoever right now if you order sealed from Japan. Do I order Pokemon cards from Japan? Yes, I do, but they are singles and they are directly off of eBay. So why does a Japanese dude decide to scam you? Or why and when and how. Anytime a Japanese scammer guy sees that he has an order to fulfill from a proxy website, he knows that he can now very safely take his Scarlet and Violet 151, his V-Star Universe, his, his uh, shiny treasury Xboxes, and he can go ahead and very comfortably, very easily switch them with some juice boxes. Why? Because... That's going to take a while to get to the proxy, which is thus going to take a while to get to America. And he may be selling on a website that only has a 72-hour return policy, like, say, a Mercari or a Yahoo Auctions or something like that. So the originating website that the seller sold on has a return policy that expires before the buyer himself realizes he was scammed. Ta-da! Here's another big issue. The third party proxy middleman, whatever, they have employees. Those employees probably don't make a ton of money. And those Japanese employees over there, wherever they are, they know just as well as we do how expensive Pokemon cards can be or how you can resell them. So let's say a, somebody buys Pokemon cards from seven sealed Pokemon products from seven or eight different sellers and then all those items get sent to the third party proxy the third party proxy the middleman has to put all those different orders in a box together and then send them to America they get to America and then the person's 40 boxes between seven different sellers that he got off by E or whatever Let's say 24 of those boxes are juice boxes. Well, how are you going to figure out which boxes came from who? And there's people who work at these third-party sites who will absolutely switch out boxes themselves at the third-party middleman facility. So anyway, guys, moral of the story is do not use a middleman proxy service to get your sealed Japanese products. It is no longer a necessary thing that you need to do at all. You're not going to save any money, and there's a, probably a 50-plus percent chance. Not really, but there's an absolute huge chance that you absolutely will get scammed if you use a proxy middleman service. I find it kind of ironic. Literally rattle two day, yesterday, the same day that Vault got scammed, made a video about this very topic. And he literally bought from multiple different uh, proxy sellers. And somehow he actually didn't get scammed. But then literally an hour later, Vault goes live and gets scammed. I find that absolutely hilariously ironic. Um, don't let it happen to you. 
This is now a known issue that we, the consumers, should all know about, that the scammers figured out about first and have been taking advantage of for the last several years. Don't let it happen to you. Use, use Pokey&E, use Poker Collect, use eBay, use PayPal, use people and companies that you actually trust. All right, that's all I got. Uh, my thousand giveaway winner. This was an impromptu video. I had no idea I was going to make this video, obviously. Um, so my next video, my next video, I will announce the uh, last video's 1,000 subscriber uh, giveaway. Until then, please watch one of these two videos coming up next. Deuces!